Hello guys, welcome back. I am Ajay Kumar. Here I am with the second lecture of the course Introduction to Programming using C language. This lecture will also be based on the introduction of C language. More concisely, we will discuss the working of C which consists code compilation, code compilation, execution of the program and a little bit architect of C. Now, before directly jump, jump into the uh, code, ex code execution and compilation part, now let us discuss some key features of the C language. Here, let's see. The C source code on compilation is directly converted to the computer's executable file. Now, what does this line mean? Now, get back uh, for this. Uh, we will go to the C program and then we will compile it and try to run this. Here I have written a very simple program, C program. We will compile it using our compiler that's already installed in my computer. And I have a compiler GNU GCC and uh, now I will compile it right in front of you. For compiling this program, I just need to write GCC and then name of the file hello.c hello .c. here i have just run this simple command and we have now a.exe file here it is the compiled version of this c source program now try to run this program for running this program we just need to write the name dot a or we can write the extension also but uh, it doesn't require here i have printed the hello world which was given in the main function or we can say in the program so now you have seen that this a dot exe file is directly can be run uh, we can directly run this file this this file on any of the windows terminal uh, console command prompt we don't need any kind of interpreter for this file to run now get back to the second point any code written in c and compiled is a console application uh, as i shown you, as i have shown you uh, we can run the compiled c source code directly in the terminal because it's it is a console application this is the reason and uh, unless and until we define some gui graphics user interface in the program it will interact through the console or the command line or or the terminal of the computer we have just in this program we have just uh, uh, given an instruction to the computer to print hello world uh, there can be many other things also in which we just need to write some value in the command line or something else. We can write these type these type of programs also. But right now we have just given a single instruction to the com uh, computer that is to print a hello world. So the interaction here in this file is happening just through the command line. So, any uh, again, any code written in C compiled is a console application. Simple. Now, the third point is there can be many compilers for a language. Yes, we can uh, we can have uh, more than one compiler for any language, not only for C. And uh, uh, when we talk about C, we have GNU GCC compiler, which is the most popular C compiler and we will be using it uh, throughout the course now the next line is c language is a function based language that is most of the code is written in collection of instructions which is used inside the most important function in c program what does this point mean now get back to the main our source for source code here I have written this line print f hello world and then return zero inside the main function. Now what is this main function means? 
actually in C language, whatever we have to do, we have to do any kind of task, we need to write our code inside the main function, in this function. This, this doesn't mean we can't define any other function. Yes, we can do any kind of uh, other stuff. We, we can define any kind of function, but for using them, we have to execute uh, every other function in the main function and we will connect it uh, by calling the function in the main function we will do it later in the course but right now you just need to understand that without the main function we can't run the program if we just remove this program and try to write here printf hello world here the compiler is giving us an error what is this declaration is incompatible with int codec and something like this because we can't write any of the program here the only thing that C support is the main function the compiler will first of all check for the main function in the source C source code. If there is no main function, the program will not be executing, will not be running. We can't just run uh, without the main function. This is the most important function of C. So, now the fifth point is C is platform based language, which means we have to compile the source code again, again for the different operating systems. Now, like uh, we have this function printf and uh, we are printing hello world dot hello world. Okay, sorry, sorry, spelling mistakes. So let's compile it again gcc hello dot c now we have compiled it and uh, the file is the same because uh, the compiler has compiled uh, the program to a dot exe again and uh, deleted the previous file and re replaced it with the new a dot exe file now here we have compiled this program we can easily run it by doing this and here we get the hello world printed but when we try to run this a.exe file in some other operating system like mac os and linux we will get different type of errors and different kind of bugs because the c language as i told in the previous lecture it is a platform based language or i can say that it is a uh, this language is directly connected to the operating system so for every operating system we have to compile the source code again and again so we uh, we can we can't run a.exe in a, any other operating system like windows and mac os but we can run this a.exe file in any of the windows machine because it is compiled on windows now it's time to discuss about the function a function in a programming language is quite similar to a relation in mathematics and we all are habitual we are all comfortable with the relation word because we all have some kind of relation with somebody so it's quite similar to that because we are uh, we can consider ourselves as the input of the function or the other person as the output uh, but sometimes we just don't need the return value in the programming function how just read the next line as in mathematics we provide some input to the function and it gives us the output for example uh, in the header function 
that we have written fx is equal to x, x square plus 2x plus 6. So if we put x is equal to 1, we will get f of 1 equal to 10. This is quite common thing in mathematics. We just put any particular value and we expect a return value. But in case of programming languages, functions do not return a particular value every time. Sometimes they are just uh, taking some input and uh, without any return value, they are just doing their work. How is this possible? Maybe uh, sometimes we just need to change the input. For example, I, I need to give a value x uh, whose value is, uh, I, I need to give a value x uh, uh, which contain 10 in it and uh, I want to change that x to 15 and we don't, we just don't want to return that value. Now, this task will be done in a function but we are not uh, getting the value in return. This is not a mathematical function because in mathematics we every time we put an input we expect some output but in programming languages it's just like a relation now here we can say that 10 has a relation with 15 because we are changing 10 to 15 simple now functions are used as helping hand for other tasks like in the above expression, we have to calculate x to the power 2. We can create another function which will return square of the number. Here in the header function, we have to calculate x to the power 2 for this fx function. So we can create, yes we can create another a separate function for it in which we will be giving an input x and uh, the function will be returning the square of the number. And then after that, we will be using that function uh, inside this fx function so that uh, we can easily perform our task. So here, the other function was a helping hand to the fx function. In contrast, we can say that a function is a collection of instruction that is used to perform a task on a given range or set of inputs which return some value of just perform task on the input or it may be possible the function does not take any input. The last line, it may be uh, sounds a little confusing so we will discuss it further. Uh, sometimes, uh, we, uh, take an example of a, a constant function in mathematics, uh, uh, take fx is equal to 4. Now here, uh, if we put uh, any kind of value of x, uh, x is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, any value, it will always return 4 to us. So we can say that we don't need to put any value in, the, in that function. In programming, we can specify that we are not giving any kind of uh, input to this function, but still, the function can return some value but it is also possible that we are giving some input to the function but still it is not returning anything to the user so this was the major thing that we have to understand for any kind of function now one more thing is also important is that not every function is made for any kind of input what does this line mean? For example, uh, this header function, uh, we can put x any integer, but we can't put x as any imaginary number, iota or a character or a alphabet a, b, c, because we can't square an alphabet a raised to the power 2. So, this function has a range of inputs we can only put these values in that function. So this is also important. We will be doing this thing in our programming functions also. Now, we have discussed quite a lot about function. Now it's time 
to think about the compilation process so let's jump in, jump into it now compilation or compilation in any programming language the compilation process converts the c the source code directly to the machine code that is zeros and ones but why does this process is named as compilation we can say it as conversion because we are converting the syntax of that language to the zeros and ones let's go on the literal meaning of the compilation compilation means collecting similar and related things and combining them into one unit for the betterment of the user like creating a playlist of favorite music is also a compilation uh, for, uh, or uh, we can say that uh, i uh, let's say i'm just creating a list of my favorite superhero movies or if i can say just uh, creating a list of marvel movies in which i am including every superhero from iron man captain america hulk thor spider man and every other superheroes so this is also known as compilation so as the literal meaning of the compilation the complete source is combined to a single unit by taking all the individual units what does this line mean actually behind the scenes when compilation is happening and we are writing the code the functions that we have written for the uh, user uh, to ta to perform a certain task differently and then combining all these in the main function all these functions have a particular location in the memory and which are which can be random totally random maybe uh, one the one of the function is uh, just near to the main function and the other could be at the corner of the memory and the compilation process compile them and connect them to the main function that is running so this is the reason why this process is known as compilation not conversion there now there, there are many steps involved in compilation of c program to exe file because we can uh, we can even imagine that uh, first of all the compiler may be uh, checking the syntax of the program that uh, it is correct or not and then maybe it's going to the some processes and then to the main function then to the uh, defined functions and connecting them but uh, we don't need to think about them because we have plenty of knowledge uh, so that we can run our code easily after the compilation now it's time to look into the process of execution of the program so get to that slide now as we know that a c source code that is compiled is a console application and a computer's executable file this means we can directly run our program written in c uh, what does this mean actually some of the programming languages other than c and c++ use an interpreter and some virtual environment for running the program like uh, even the python dart needs a virtual environment in which they run the program without the compilation of the program and uh, the java java use java virtual machine and then which provide a java runtime environment for the execution of code they they directly doesn't uh, convert the source code into the zeros and ones so they can't be run directly uh, without the uh, uh, occurrence of uh, any virtual environment or the runtime environment so c have a lot of advantages over other languages and uh, running a c program so easily is one of them one can write c code in any editor and save it save the file with c extension dot c extension and can easily compile it using gcc compiler by providing the path of the c source code file what does this line mean so let's get back to our code here we have written a simple program and i am deleting the compiled file 
and we will be doing this again as we have done previously we can compile easily this file with gcp and then providing the name of the file or we can say path of the file but we are already in that folder so we don't need to give the complete path now every time we just compile the program let's create let's just compile gcc hello dot c and here we have compiled this program to a dot exe but what if I just create another program check dot c in which I'm just copying all this stuff check dot c and copying I'm just changing hello world to hello friends okay so now compile now we will be compiling this file also a gcc and what is the name of the file check.c now for this we are not getting any of uh, any file uh, we have the same a.exe file now try to run a.exe file we are getting hello friends so what is happening here when we compile this file the previous a.exe file is replaced with the new a.exe file which is nothing but the compiled version of check.c but the hello.c is now uh, uh, doesn't contain any compiled version here so for removing this we can provide the name of the file while compiling the program now i will compile the hello.c again but this time i will give the name by which i want to save the file for this we will just write gcc the name of the file then minus o and then name what i want to i just want to save the file with the same name as the uh, c source code file so I have written hello.c minus o hello and this time we are getting a hello.exe file now we will try to run this file also slash hello and this time we are getting hello do hello world which is written in the hello.c program so we can just write any of the name uh, what we want of the file but if we don't give any uh, free uh, file name it will uh, give the default name that is a.exe to the file so we have in this lecture we have completed the working of c and we have taken the overview of all of the uh, working and uh, uh, we came to know that uh, C is a function based language and we will be following function first approach in learning C so that you can easily understand the basic architect of C language we will be learning how to define uh, our own function and how to use them in the main function uh, so that you can you, you will grab the uh, basic architect of C the basic uh, working of C, how the C work behind the scenes and so in the next lecture we will be directly jumping to the syntax part of the C. Till then keep learning. Thank you.